treatment demonstration with HK.ESWL-VM extracorporeal shockwave lithotripter from Wicom. Demonstration of X-ray and ultrasound dual localization. Case 1. A 33-year-old male patient with recurrent left lumbar colic for one month. He was diagnosed upper left ureteral calculi before. The pain had been relieved after previous treatments, but since then the left lower back pain came back and attacked three times. He has 5-year history of urolithiasis and has been treated with EXWL for 3 times. He has no other medical history and no intake of anticoagulants. His BMI is 28.34, falling into the obesity category. The blood pressure was normal. The urine pH is 6.0 and urine white blood cells shows 3 plus signals. The routine blood test, blood coagulation, blood electrolyte, and renal function were tested normal. The abdominal plain film and ultrasound image both indicated left upper ureteral calculi. The stone size is measured 9 times 7 millimeters. The clinical diagnosis is upper left ureteral calculi with mild hydronephrosis. The doctor recommended extracorporeal shockwave lithotripsy treatment. First of all, patient was informed of the diagnosis, treatment plan, treatment effect, and risk of the disease. The patient was asked to sign an acknowledgement consent. Then, the routine blood pressure measurement was performed. Ultrasound examination was performed again before the ESWL treatment to confirm the location of the stone. The doctor marked the rough stone position on the skin of the patient. Wicom VM extracorporeal shockwave lithotripter was used for this treatment. The equipment was installed in a 20 square meters radiation proof room. The treatment steps are as follows. Before the treatment, the tabletop was covered with radiation proof lead aprons. Power on the machine, locking Wicom's lithotripsy software system. Input the patient's medical records. Pre-adjust the therapy C-arm so that the shockwave source roughly points to the stone location. Adjust the incident angle of the shockwave source, the height of the water sac, and the probe of the ultrasound scanner. Apply the copulant on the water sac and the probe of the ultrasound scanner. The patient was in a line face-up position, and the shockwave source is aligned to the skin marks. Cover the patient with a radiation-proof lead apron. The preparation is done. The X-ray was firstly used to localize the stone in C-arm upright position. Align the stone position and the focal point. Rotate the C-arm to a finite angle, then align the stone position with the focal point again by only adjusting the patient table height. Repeat these two alignment steps until the stone position and focal point are aligning both the upright and the finite angle C-arm position. After the X-ray localization, engage the ultrasound probe. Raise the ultrasound probe to track the stone in real time. If the ultrasound and X-ray images are inconsistent, repeat the above localization steps until the two images are completely consistent. Wear latex gloves and check the coupling between the shockwave source and the skin. Ensure that the water sac engages with the skin completely. Start the treatment with shockwave frequency at 55 times per minute. Preset 2100 triggers and start triggering at energy level 1. Increase the energy level every 100 shocks. Based on the degree of pain and the reaction of the patient, select appropriate top energy level, which is generally the level 5 or 6. 
monitor the patient's blood pressure during the treatment. Track changes of the stone in real time with ultrasound. It was found that the shape of the stone changed little after 1500 shocks in the ultrasound image. The shape of the stone did not change obviously in the x-ray image neither. The doctor asked the patient to take a lying down position to continue the treatment. There was no skin damage after 1500 shocks. At the lying face down position, repeat the above mentioned x-ray localization steps. The shape of the stone changed gradually during the treatment. There was almost no stone visible in the x-ray image after 2200 shocks. The stone was smashed and the ultrasound image of it became dimmer. After the treatment, the diameter of the stone distribution was about 4 cm with ultrasound imaging. The first urine after the ESWL treatment was pink. There was no stone particles in the front. Before the patient left, the doctor asked the feeling of the patient, informed him the cautions after the treatment, methods of collecting stones, and the date for your examination. After the treatment, clean, sterilize, and reset the machine. Demonstration of ultrasound localization above the patient table. Case 2 A 59 year old male with left lumbar colic for two days. The pain had been relieved after previous treatments. The patient is healthy without any history of urolysis and no intake of anticoagulant drugs. The body mass index and blood pressure was normal. The routine urine test, blood test, four tests of bleeding and coagulation, blood electrolyte, and renal function were tested normal. The abdominal plane film indicated left upper ureteal calculi. The stone size was measured 9 times 7 mm by the ultrasound. The clinical diagnosis is upper left ureteal calculi with mild hydroanaphrosis. The doctor recommended extracorporeal shockwave lethal trypsy treatment. First of all, the patient was informed of the diagnosis, treatment plan, treatment effect, and the risk of the disease. The patient was asked to sign an acknowledgement consent. Then, the routine blood pressure measurement was performed. The ultrasound examination was performed again before the ASWL treatment to confirm the location of the stone. The doctor marked the rough stone position on the skin of the patient, set the therapy head above the patient table for the ASWL treatment, removed the ultrasound scanner probe and the holder, turned over the therapy head arm and reset the patient table. Adjust the angle of the shockwave source according to the stone position. Install the ultrasound probe holder and the ultrasound probe. Put the patient in the supon position so the position mark is close to the shockwave source. Apply the copulin on the contact area between the ultrasound probe and the skin. Move the patient table to search for the stone and align the stone position and the focal point. Wear latex gloves and check the coupling between the shockwave source and the skin. Ensure that the water sac engages with the skin completely. Set the shockwave frequency at 55 times per minute for 2000 shocks, starting at energy level 1. Based on the degree of pain and the reaction of the patient, increase the energy level every 100 shocks. The whole process was monitored by real-time ultrasound to keep track of the stone change according to the shape, density, and acoustic changes of the stone. The X-ray can also be used to monitor the degree of the stone polarization. The stone can hardly be seen under the X-ray after 1600 shocks. The stone was smashed and the ultrasound image of it became dimmer, so the treatment was terminated then. Then check the skin lesions of the patient. The first urine after ESWL treatment was pink. There was no stone particles in the first urine. Before the patient left, the doctor asked the feeling of the patient, informed him the cautions after the treatment, methods of collecting stones, and the date for re-examination. 